It's so easy to have our heads down on YouTube that we don't actually come up to see what trends are happening in marketing in general. And how do we become the person that's able to leverage these trends? I am so excited for you to hear today's featured conversation with Sean Cannell and Eric Sue, where you're going to hear a dynamic entrepreneur who really has the pulse on modern marketing. My name is Heather Torres, and you are listening to the Think Marketing Show, the number one podcast to help you grow your influence with YouTube and turn that influence into a high profit and high impact online business. If you're new to the podcast, welcome. Make sure you subscribe because every single Tuesday we are dropping a brand new fire episode just for you. You can subscribe wherever you're listening to this content on and stick around to the end because I'm going to share with you a class that I think is the next step for you if you have not figured out how to crush it on YouTube yet. Let's jump into today's featured conversation all about the trends of marketing. Welcome back to the Think Marketing Podcast. I'm so fired up for this episode because we're gonna be talking about marketing trends for 2021, as well as how you can level up this year and get more impact, not just in your business, but also in your life. Because I've got Eric Sue, the author of Leveling Up. Eric, how's it going? Good to be here, Sean. Super happy, super, super great to, to see you healthy. We're both healthy, so no complaints, right? So. For sure, man. Grateful for you and uh, love that you do so many cool things. You run an incredible agency. You've got just an epic podcast, a couple different podcasts. You got different things going on, and you so you have your pulse majorly on what's happening in marketing as the host of Marketing School. And so, man, with 2020 being such an absolutely insane year, and a lot of people wondering what should my plan be, how should I position, how should I pivot, what should I be paying attention to? What are some of the marketing trends that you think we should be paying attention to in 2021? I'll tell you one thing. I'm, I'm taking my, my phone out right here, but um, you know, do, do you have a Clubhouse account? Man, I've been invited a couple times, and I've been yeah. so busy with YouTube, but yeah. I've I've heard so much about it, and I need yeah. to get, jump on that. It's becoming a, a pretty big thing. So Andreessen Horowitz, which is a big VC firm, backed them. And um, Clubhouse is basically we can start a room and just make whatever topic, and then people just join, and we can be nerding out like this, and then people will be joining in. Maybe you can invite people in to have a conversation. It's almost like having off the cuff webinars. Um, so what's interesting is I was I did my first room yesterday with um, a couple of friends, you know, um, a couple other entrepreneurs, and um, we had like. 20, 30 people join, right? And we don't have any audience on there yet. But what's fascinating is we checked some other rooms and it was like, how to prepare for 2021 or something. You got 1,700 people and they're just hanging out. That's like a big webinar in there, right? So my point is Clubhouse, I think is going to be a big deal. Um, Twitter actually came out with it. it. It looks very similar. It's called Twitter Spaces. And all this centers around audio, right? You see Spotify buying up all these podcast companies, them making analytics better. Um, so I think audio is kind of the meta trend. And then you have these, um, you know, in, you know, these little, these apps that you can use like Twitter spaces or clubhouse. Um, that, that's one thing. That's so interesting too, because I also, I, uh, just joined a mastermind with a couple friends that's kind of like peer led and they're like, how do you want to communicate Voxer? And so they got me on Voxer. I got the Voxer premium. I started seeing that there was all this action going on Voxer and audio is kind of the angle of Voxer as well. Yeah. Yeah, it, funny story. Voxer was actually a client of Single Grains, uh, you know, back back in the day. But yeah, I think Voxer is a great example. I think uh, what Russell Brunson's mastermind does a good example, does a good job with using Voxer. Um, it's just it's personal and it's easy, right? I think people in the room yesterday were just saying like, it's a lot. We can do it off the cuff. We can be sitting on our bed or whatever. It doesn't. We don't have to prepare for video like this. Not that there's anything wrong with video. Yeah, so powerful. What's the next trend? Um. Uh, a lot of SEOs are talking about GPT-3. I think I'm a little um, skeptical about it because um, in one sense, because when marketers get their hands on something, they tend to pollute it. And GPT-3 is basically um, leveraging the power of AI to create copy at scale, right? So you can create headlines at scale and all that type of stuff. There's, uh, there's a tool called copy.ai and there's another one called copysmith.ai. And they're all building very similar tools, right? Um, but if it saves time in terms of coming up with captions for Instagram or headlines for YouTube, um, I'm all for it, right? I'm just hoping that it doesn't bring everyone to, to, to the same level. 
um, it just raises the bar to the next level. Everyone's there. Um, so I'm hoping it's not the next version of article spinning 2.0, which is how people used to spam the internet um, in, in back in the old SEO days. Man, so good. Number three. Number three is using mergers and acquisitions as a marketing channel, as a growth channel, right? So as an example, Single Grain is an agency I bought. It was a failing agency. Um, the work we were doing was no longer working. And I bought the company for $2 out of pocket, right? And I negotiated. The rest was basically through, um, you know, it was seller finance. And I, the, I had a contingency where if the company failed, I would owe nothing. Little did I know at that time, I was doing a version of mergers and acquisitions. But what I was actually acquiring was I was acquiring a website that had some good domain authority. Um, I had, you know, uh, great employees on the team and we had a base to build off of, right? So one plus one equals four. Um, and so the way I looked at it was um, if I could, if I could, you know, take the talent and then take the website and grow it, um, it it's, it's, we're going to have a lot of leverage, right? So basically what we're able to do with that was say, okay, you know, once we, once we're able to turn the company around, let's take that cash flow and go and invest it in other stuff, which is largely what we've been able to do. Um, that's one example. Another example would be, um, I'm actually trying, I, I was trying to buy this SEO company for a couple million dollars and, um, they had a customer base. Okay. They also had great software that is a site with great domain authority. Um, and they also had a great team, a great CTO that we can plug in. And we, we thought of it as, Oh, we can plug that team in with ClickFlow, which is our software. We can plug the, the customers into ClickFlow as well. And then we could take the website and then maybe we can build affiliate content if we want. And we're going to have all these other revenue streams. Right. Um, and the great news about M and a is it's not super complicated. Um, you can basically, let's say instead of paying, let's say the, the, the sale price of a company is $2 million. You can basically put 10% down in America, $200,000. Right. And the rest can be financed by the, the, the SBA and not enough people are taking advantage of this. And I think looking at this from an, a marketing perspective, a growth perspective, um, and don't, you don't need to think that you need to have a lot of money to do this. You don't. And we're thinking a lot about that at Think uh, Media because we also realize we've built influence. So how could we also then potentially strategically acquire something and use our influence to growth hack it, you know, because we already could point a lot of attention there and um, really, really cool strategy. What is your take on the state of content marketing as far as trends um, going into the idea of not just 2021, but the feeling that, of course, more people are in the game than ever before. There's more crowds than ever before. And as a massive content creator yourself, as a business owner, as a leader, as one that is in the day-to-day -day operations, um, what is kind of your approach for winning as a content creator and uh, for the trends you see? I think the biggest thing you said was at the very end. I think in the beginning, maybe, a, a, I don't know, or not in the beginning, but a couple of years ago, I thought I had to be in the day to day. I think the key thing is um, even you're, you're a creator as well. I think it's the key for us as, as leaders is to get out of the day to day and do the highest leverage activity, which is actually creating content or doing deals. Um, and I, I got this insight. Um, I think it was always in the back of my mind. It's like, yeah, I should probably just create more content. But I was doing a podcast interview with uh, this guy named Anthony Pompliano, and he's got great audiences kind of across the board, Twitter, YouTube, podcasts and all that. And I was like, so what do you do all day? He's like, oh, all I do is I create content because, um, you know, I, one of my jobs is to invest in companies. It helps with deal flow. I meet amazing people and, um, you know, it helps me get leverage. And so I'm like, wow, yeah, that should be the only thing that I focus on um, besides doing deals. So the key thing was for me um, was hiring, whether it's GMs or CEOs for the, the businesses I'm running a day to day while I, I, I sit um, at a strategic level and I kind of jump in here and there where they need help. Super, super smart. That's a high level of thinking, which really kind of teases us up into your new book called Leveling Up. And of course, we'll link it up in the show notes and the description and everywhere. You got to pick up a copy of this book. Um, give us kind of the 30,000 foot level of um, the book first. And I want to ask you about a couple of the strategies you recommend, because I know these are going to help us grow our businesses this year. But what's the vision behind Leveling Up? Yeah, I think the whole idea is, you know, when we play games growing up, did you play any games growing up? Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I and, and now I have a son that's yeah. a couple months old. And so I haven't been, but I just finished Final Fantasy uh, 7 Remake, Red Dead Redemption 2. Yeah. I've been crushing yeah. Ghost of Shinema. <laughs> and then you go back, Street Fighter, Mortal yeah. Kombat. But Final Fantasy is a great example when I think of leveling up. Yeah. And how did you feel when you were playing those games? Oh, I felt amazing. Yeah. 
So, I mean, the, the key thing here is you you feel amazing. I mean, it, it brings you back to, for me, when I think about my childhood, it, it makes me think like a child, right? And I think that's one of the key things I have in the book is, you know, when you think like a child, you think like a beginner and that keeps you curious. It keeps you wanting to, to, to grow more, right? So I think a lot of stuff around gaming, if you reframe real life into a game, it becomes much easier and it just becomes fun. And so when I wake up every day, and by the way, I think business is the ultimate game. I just have so much fun. I've recaptured that same feeling that I had growing up. So whether you play games or not, you can just say, you, you might say, Eric, I don't resonate with you. I didn't play games. Well, if you played sports or if you're into sports, same deal. Sports is a game. And you learn a lot of the stuff that you learn um, from, you know, playing video games or sports, vice versa. It's the same deal. You just got to look at life as a game and it just becomes better, more fun. Man, I love that. And you're absolutely right. Uh, life, I think about, you know, I'm a runner. So I think about hitting uh, like my next personal best, my next personal record on a certain distance, like a half marathon or in business, you hit a uh, growth target, an amount of leads capture target, a profit, a revenue, um, all kinds of different targets. Well, there's so many amazing chapters and topics because you give us these levers for leveling up. But I wanted to just ask you about a couple of them that we could apply. One of them, level six is the apprentice mentality. What does that mean? Yeah, the apprentice mentality is basically approaching everything from a growth mindset, right? Or an apprentice mindset. You can call it a beginner's mindset as well, whatever you want to call it. I think it's once once you start to think you're an expert, once you start to think you're really good, you start to decay very quickly. You start to become arrogant and you start to become clouded with all these, you know, random thoughts, right? That do not help. But when I think about it, like even when I'm having conversations with, with you like this right now, I, I'm very much still learning and I'm approaching it with, you know, I'm very much a, uh, a, na a naive person that's just trying to get better, right? When I approach it from that perspective, and I'm not coming off like a from a you know know it all cocky perspective, I just find that I build better relationships. I find that I'm much more open to things, and that in turn helps me compound my knowledge. I think when you close yourself off like an expert, you start to I guess decompound your interest. Yeah, that's so good. And humility, right? I mean, pride comes before the fall. So kind of to stay. Stu stay a student, stay humble. And does this include even actually maybe finding different models and different apprentices in life? I think about Simon Sinek who wrote, uh, talks about, you know, worthy rivals mm -hmm. and that, you know, comparison will kill our joy, right. And potentially discourage us, but it is good to have worthy rivals. And I like to look with respect for competitors and be aware of what's happening in the spot. Like I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll learn from that yeah. even in adjacent industries. Does this include that? I think, I mean, so that to me is competitiveness and I'm, I'm a very competitive person. So I think there's a, there's a time and place for that. I think gaming does facilitate that. I think the apprentice model, um, you know, when I'm, let's say I'm mentoring someone, or let's say I have a mentor, the mentor is very much still learning from me. It, it's, it kind of goes both ways. And the same thing is if, if, am I mentoring people too? It's, it's, I still have that apprentice mentality because I'm getting different perspective and I'm probably out of touch with a lot of things that are now new. Man, so powerful. Level eight is alchemy. What does that even mean? Yeah, so alchemy is, so I, I used to play, uh, you know, World of Warcraft and EverQuest and used to, there's some some certain classes that can create stuff from thin air, right? And, um, you know, when I think about alchemy, it's kind of the work that we're doing with uh, marketing or sales. You're kind of creating stuff from, from thin air, right? It's the magic of being able to pull people to you. So when you think about your YouTube channel, Sean, you're pulling a lot of people to you and then you're actually able to generate a sale. It's just like, it's, it's magic to me, right? You're, you're doing it in real life. So I think there's a, it's very important to understand both sales and marketing. Um, it doesn't matter if you are in any role at all, because every single day you're selling yourself. Like when we, when you go out to somewhere and you're talking to your team members, you have to sell the vision, right? Or if you're talking to a prospect, you got to sell that as well. But if you want to bring people in, it's, it's easier to market and you have to play the long game, which is, um, you know, put out content, uh, get better at the content and then just think for the long term, right? Compound over time and eventually you'll get there. And is alchemy, it is like the combination of different materials. If you were to talk about doing alchemy with a sword, is that accurate or am I wrong yeah. there? Yeah, no, that that's right. So in a way, it's also kind of like to really have an edge in 2021 and beyond. You you maybe need to combine different things. There's a fascinating book called Range, which actually uh, proposed that generalists will actually succeed over specialists in the new world because you'd think that even maybe robots and AI can take over a, a very specific task. But when you're a generalist, in a way, if you're pulling in maybe pop culture meets 
understanding of design meets understanding of copywriting meets understanding of business and your end object objective meets understanding the customer, whoever understands the customer or the viewer best wins. You're, you need to do alchemy with all those things to potentially create a YouTube video, a sales funnel, a product. And th this is kind of like the modern skill set of combining these different disciplines. Yes. Yeah. I mean, it's, I think this is really important too. It's very hard to find people in life that are able to connect the dots. Well, so, you know, if, if you're a T shaped, let's say, uh, talking about a marketer, right? If you're a T shaped marketer, let's say you go deep on SEO, but you understand the other nuances pretty well, you're able to connect the dots. Maybe if I do well in SEO over here, I can do something with YouTube and then, you know, one plus one equals four, right? Just like the example I gave earlier. Um, or, you know, you can talk about, um, being able to, uh, combine, I don't know, let's, let's say your social media prowess with, um, let's say a customer data platform, whatever you just combine a different things. That's my main point. Yeah, it's amazing. Um, well, I'm so excited for this book. There's another one, um, level 13 thievery. What an interesting chapter name and way to level up. So what do you mean by thie thievery? Yeah. You know, um, I think it was Steve jobs that said everything in life is a remix. And I remember one of the, um, I, I won a championship when I was 13 years old. And basically this is called a, a best of the best, right? And for, for my, my class, I was playing a druid, right? So that was one of my classes and, um, you know, the, the character that I played and, um, whoever won would get the championship. You would be, you know, known to everyone on the server, right? In the preliminaries, I was getting dominated by everybody. Um, I was inferior in terms of strength, inferior in terms of inferior in terms of equipment, um, until, we got to the real matches and because I got lucky with the, the timing, I saw one person that was really good. And I just, I was like, Oh, this person's moving around differently. This place is, there's, this person's playing differently. And then I, I, I was like, Oh, I think I can do better than that. And because I, I played a lot of quake before I played a lot of, um, half-life, you know, counter-strike, whatever. And so that person was just strafing around when they're fighting, right? The other people were just kind of standing still and fighting. So I was like, okay, I'll just copy that. And because I copied that person, I ended up winning the championship. But then that, that moment I was like, oh, you know what? All I need to do is, is ethically copy people, copy things that make sense and take it in for myself and, and, and just mold it into my own. Right. And so a lot of the things that you see taking this into the business world right now, a lot of people are, um, let's see, you have, you have, okay. You, you start with AWS, right. And everyone's like, oh, Google's like, I, I want to do one too. Microsoft, like, let's do Azure, right. Everyone's copying Amazon. Um, and you, everyone can say, you know, everyone wants to be original and all that, but at the end of the day, we're all very much just kind of, you know, iterating on the shoulders of giants. Right. So th my point here is that when I, when I use the word thievery, you can steal ethically, right? Because again, there's a lot of inspiration from around you. Um, just, just steal ethically, just make sure you give credit where it's due. Man, that's one of my favorite tips. And I remember Steve Jobs, I saw a little video clip of him quoting Pablo Pagasso that good artists copy, great artists steal. Yeah. And he said, we've never been afraid of taking the best ideas. And I think what's exciting, there's the great book, Steal Like an Artist, yeah. um, the uh, of taking the best ideas. But what, what really gets interesting is when you're pulling maybe from outside of your industry and into your industry, a friend of mine, Shalene Johnson um, is one of, she has, holds world records for the most fitness DVDs sold. She's, you know, the inventor of Pio and Turbo Jam and Turbo Kick. And back in the day, um, fitness workout DVDs that she would order on an infomercial were very like cut and dry, kind of, they were very professional. And she was watching TV and she saw there was like bloopers in certain videos or America's Funniest Home Videos. And she just thought, well, what if I put more of my personality, but what if we did like, we were way less serious. What if we're doing the serious workout, but we just put bloopers in it. That doesn't seem revolutionary today, but at the time she saw an idea somewhere else, combined it with her industry and her niche and really broke through with people are like, man, this is much more real and much more relatable. And so I think it's kind of fascinating to potentially use ethical thievery by being maybe exposed to even other industries or even channels outside of your niche or other YouTube channels and think about elements that you can combine. And you said it, it becomes a remix. Some of our favorite songs are a classic beat with the new bass line with oh. some new lyrics and some different vocals. And so there's the old and the new kind of put together and it ultimately becomes new when that is presented to the public. And it could be the very thing that helps someone break through in 2021.
talking about combining so totally right if you start with an apprentice mindset you're going to be learning a lot of things and then that's going to give you ideas and then you're going to be able to ethically steal the ones that make sense according to what you're doing man that's amazing so um a lot of people listening you know some people are more established this has been some very practical things we can apply uh you got to pick up the book leveling up it's out on amazon people can get it uh, everywhere yeah yep um and so check out the book eric sue leveling up but if someone's just starting, because we have got some people in our community, right, that are kind of just getting into the game, man, life's hit them potentially like a freight train. Their industry has been disrupted. They find themselves furloughed or working from home. They're trying to reinvent. They maybe want to create a business from home and build a life on their own terms so that they can spend more time with their kids or have more freedom. And, um, you know, I I'm not sure how long you've been in this and maybe you could share a little bit of your story, but I think I've been trying to level up, learn, hustle on YouTube, build my side hustle, build a business for over a decade now, focused for the last five years. And it can be kind of overwhelming in today's landscape to think about being at that beginner stage in 2021. What's some advice when maybe you just take us a little bit back to your journey of the daunting thought of, man, how am I going to do this? How am I going to break through? Everybody else is, I'm comparing my beginning to other people's middle and I, I feel like I don't even want to start. What's some advice you've learned for new entrepreneurs? Yeah, I think, I mean, there's there's a lot of um, cliches here, right? We, we talk about fail forward. Uh, my favorite quote is from uh, Winston Church, Churchill. If you're going through hell, keep going. I think also reframing. Um, so, you know, the title of this is think, right? I think people need to rethink how, the, how they approach pain. I think physical pain, yes, uh, you don't want too much of that. Right. Um, but mental pain, I mean, th that's kind of the prerequisite to get to the next level. You're going to have to go through le certain levels of pain to reach the next level. And that's how you keep leveling up. Um, and so understanding that, you know, most people that have achieved, uh, uh, I would say the vast majority of people that have achieved success have gone through a lot of pain to get there. Um, that's the ticket. And I think, you know, I, I have a chapter in, in the book um, towards the end talking about the wealth ladder, which is from um, the, the CEO of ConvertKit. Um, I think it's a great concept. The whole idea here is that, you know, you go to school and then the whole idea after that is you build great habits and leveling up is certainly about getting the right power ups, the right habits. Um, and then afterwards, maybe you start working somewhere. Let's say you don't have a job anymore. Maybe the next step is um, maybe you can freelance for free, right? That's the easiest thing you can do with no, not a lot of cost to get going. Um, that's why, even though I hate the traditional agency model, um, I think it's a beautiful way to say, hey, look, I don't have any experience right now. I'm just going to reach out to, to people I want to work with. And then a certain amount are going to say yes. And then maybe a month later after they like the work, you know, maybe they, I have them as clients, right? I think consulting is never going to go away. Um, and then once you get to a certain level, you can start to think about hiring people. You can start to think about building an agency. And if you want to take it to the next level, you can reinvest those cash flows, go build a product, go build a network effects business if you want, or go build a SpaceX, right? But the whole idea here is you're also leveling up the cash flows and you're leveling up the business model because, you know, this this type of thing sure you can survive by um by doing consulting but if you want to thrive maybe you take it to an agency model but if you truly want to grow beyond that you're probably gonna have to to think about where where else you want to invest the money so that's what i would say the other alternative is you can do drop shipping with e-commerce you know collect the smaller margin and then if you want to take it one level higher then you can start to hold inventory and then you can have a higher margin and then you can take it one level further beyond that you can just keep leveling up there's just different stages for different businesses Eric Sue, he's dropping the leveling up strategies. The new book is out now and you want to uh, go grab that. And um, thank you, Eric. You also got to check out his podcast, The Marketing School. Um, what's the other podcast? Leveling Up. Leveling Up podcast. And um, I, I love uh, and just want to acknowledge you and appreciate you adding value to our community today. Um, everything I've learned from you and your community um, the event we got to do together was, uh, was super fun. And just the way you think, um, man, iron sharpens iron and being around you always makes me think bigger. Really, Eric, not to be cliche, but it, it levels me up. So I appreciate you. I'm excited about this book and, uh, uh, with as much uncertainty as there is in 2021, I think when we stay connected to good people like you and we stay on kind of the cutting edge of what's happening, we can continue to have an edge in marketing and business. For sure. Thanks for having me. Really appreciate it. And uh, yeah, hope to hope to catch up in real life soon.
Wow, I hope that you were taking notes during that podcast because Eric is on another level when it comes to understanding how to level up yourself and your business. He's such a dynamic entrepreneur who really has the pulse on what's happening. I don't know about you, but I have just discovered Clubhouse, like he said at the beginning, and I am obsessed with being on there, hearing and listening into the conversation. So not that I that you need to jump out right now and start a brand new social media platform for your YouTube channel, but it's just good for us to every now and then come up and actually look at what's happening. What's the landscape? And as Eric said, audio is the up and coming. So just be thinking about how can you apply this to your YouTube channel? How can you go deeper with your own community? Or how can you tap into other markets who need what you have on YouTube? This is just for us as content creators to be aware of. I want you to stay focused and locked on growing your YouTube channel this year, but also remember that as you level yourself up, as you level your business up, as you outsource and as you grow your team, that these are things to be thinking about when it comes to how to get the information that you have out to your audience. And if you are really in those beginning stages of trying to figure out how to crush it on YouTube first, before you go to those other platforms, then I wanna encourage you that after you're done listening to this podcast, that you head over to our free one hour YouTube masterclass. You can get all the details right now at thinkmasterclass.com. This is a one hour class that's gonna share with you the three secrets to YouTube success, how to win on YouTube this year, and what to avoid as a content creator. I know there is so much to learn when it comes to YouTube, and we've distilled a decade's worth of information into one hour for you to be able to go further faster on YouTube. So make sure that if you've not checked out that free masterclass, that that is your next step here after the podcast. If you are loving this podcast, I wanna encourage you also to go and rate and review the podcast on iTunes. If you're listening to this podcast right now on iTunes, then please make sure before you leave that you leave and rate and re- that you don't leave, that you rate and review this podcast. If you're listening on other podcasting platforms or over on YouTube, then grab your phone, pull up the iTunes app and rate and review today's podcast. This not only just helps us get to more creators, but it also lets us see who's in our community and it allows us to shout you out. And today's shout out goes to Savvy Eco Queen and she wrote five stars. Thank you so much for rating us as five stars. She says, I love how Sean brings God into every episode. It helps keep me grounded as I grow in my mission. I try to only follow leaders who can do just this. He's funny and energetic and not many can say, and oh, sorry, and not many can show that through a podcast. Well, hey, Savvy Eco Queen, thank you so much for hearing our heart, for knowing that we really are on mission to help you grow on YouTube, but that we also aren't afraid to share who we are. You know, in a previous episode, Sean really talked about being your authentic self. And I'm so grateful that you saw that for us, that meant that family is important, that our faith is important, and that our community and our friends are so important, just like you. So thank you so much for leaving that review and for letting us know that you can see Sean's energetic uh, and entertaining, that's a joke if you've not seen his first video, uh, through the uh, microphone here on the podcast. So thank you for rating and reviewing, and I can't wait to read all the other reviews on the podcast. Well, thank you so much for your time and for being here to listen to today's episode. Make sure that you are subscribed so that you get locked into next episode. It is a no miss. So make sure that you are ready for that episode with your pen and your paper, and you're ready to take notes because Sean is delivering some fire for our next episode. Thanks again for being here and we'll catch you in the next podcast. 